All right, guys, as I promised, here is a sawmill video with the new LT15 wide by Woodmiser. Today, I wanted to do a video because I'm going to be milling this white birch tree. I have a lot of logs to choose from, uh, as I showed you in previous videos. So I'm, I have to be a little methodical when it comes to what I'm going to choose for milling my next log. The reason I picked this one, and instead of putting it aside and keep digging into the pile to grab more, is white birch, if it sits too long, tends to rot pretty quickly. Pine I can have sit here for two or three years, and I can still mill it and get some decent wood out of it. This stuff, it sits more than a year. It's already starting to decay, rot, and becomes pretty much useless. It just turns into mush. So I'm going to mill this one first. And white birch uh, doesn't typically get very big. This one here looks like... 9 inches on the small end, 10 inches on the large end. We don't get a whole lot of big white birch. I do have one large white birch over in this pile. I'll show you that. This log right here, which is pretty big for a white birch. And that's 20, 22 inches in diameter. That's a pretty big white birch. But typically, this is kind of the size that I normally get. Anything less smaller than this, I'd probably turn it into firewood. But... Since you don't get a whole lot of big white birch, I thought I would turn it into some nice usable hardwood lumber. So I'm going to do something a little different than I normally do, and I've been doing a little more of it lately, is I'm actually going to mill some dimensional hardwood lumber out of this to use for woodworking. One of the things I want to start doing in our shop is stocking more hardwood lumber. Probably mill a lot of that stuff in four and five quarter lumber. So I'm planning on milling all of this here into five quarter or or four quarter and uh, I'm not going to get a whole lot out of it but I'm going to try to uh, get as much as I can anything that's left I will put into the firewood pile and as most of you know we are also in the firewood business so that still works out to be something usable we try not to waste anything and this log won't be any exception so I'm going to get this loaded up onto the sawmill with the skid steer and uh, we'll go from there if you have any questions throw them down in the comment section below uh, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy the video. This end of the log is smaller by an inch uh, and there's a little bit of a crook to it. You can see here it wobbles just a little bit so it's a little bit curved. Not real bad but um, enough where I'm going to lift one end of it about a half inch or so, three quarters of an inch just to kind of even out the, the pith in the log a little bit so I can try to get the most hardwood lumber out of it that I can. I'm going to get the tow board and of course this is the little adapter that comes with the wood miser. And this is the little adapter that comes for the little log dog here. Um, it goes over the edge and it has a little tip on the end of it so it makes it bite into the log a lot better. And it also has a little uh, cutout in it so it makes it easier to grab the corner of a cant when you're cutting something square. And of course, one of the things that Woodmiser recommends doing, and I certainly found it definitely makes a difference. If you don't do it, um, I had a lot of trouble sliding the head back and forth, but without lubricating the rails, 
that the rollers ro ride along, I noticed that it doesn't cut as well either. It seems to have a harder time cutting, and I think it's uh, not riding smoothly across the rails makes makes a big difference. So I put, I just grabbed an empty cleaner bottle, and I just put transmission fluid in it. Just spray this the rails down on either side. I got something else I'll show you. Right in here, there's these uh, little felt pieces that are kind of put inside of the track or rail cover where the wheels and stuff are underneath this. I've never taken it off. Of course, the mill is pretty new, but I found that soaking these also with transmission hydraulic fluid helps keep it lubricated while you're milling. And there's four of them. There's one, two, and then there's two on the other side. So I'm just going to spray those down as well to try to keep them soaked. Um, and it helps kind of keep the whole system clean while I'm milling. Another area that I lubricate before milling every time is right up in here. I just wipe off the old sawdust. And the reason for that is there's these little plastic bushings in here that are, they just ride along here for the blade guide and that's what allows you to bring the blade guide in and out there's this leaf pipe here and it slides in and out of an opening over here but then this also rides along the top and if that's not lubricated well enough it kind of gets a little sticky makes it a little bit harder to slide the blade guide back and forth so i just either squirt, hit it with this or i also have some little can of bearing grease I keep down here and sometimes I'll just take a little grease and I'll put some grease up there but it's always quicker if I just want to get going I'll just grab this spray it up there as well as on the other side there's another one so I'll just go spray that so I sprayed the other side of that and the next thing I like to do is clean off the band wheels because they do collect uh, sappy sawdust cleaning these off the band will ride a lot nicer on these rubber band wheels and they're pretty loose and easy to clean. What I do is I actually keep this little wire brush tucked in here, and it's just a small little wire, wire brush I keep down by the sawmill. And the easiest way I found to clean these off is I just take this and I go around and I turn the band as I'm doing it. I typically just clean off the areas that I can reach and get to in between milling and every time I change the blade I take the band off and it comes off very easily once you get the blade off you can see it's pretty loose and I'll take the whole thing off and I'll clean it. So now I'm going to just set the tension on the blade, get the motor started and uh, get back up there and top off the lubricant. And I keep these down here full. These are uh, old containers from washer fluid that I used to use on my sawmill, my other sawmill. And I just fill these with a gallon of water each and put Dawn liquid dish soap in here um, so it's nice and slick. And then I just use that to keep refilling this. Put these bottles up here. Step up on here. Put these bottles over here. Make sure that's off. So when I pull this tube off, the rest of what's in there doesn't leak out. Get the straps. Put the bottle here. Keep reusing these to keep plenty of water down here at the sawmill because the sawmill is not up by my house anymore so I don't have access to running water out here in the woods. So it's only about a half full but that'll be plenty of water for what I'm doing today. Next time I come down I'll make sure these are completely full and I'll fill it all the way. And I use a lot of lubricant when I'm milling because I typically mill a lot of sappy pine. Open the valve, make sure I got running water, make sure the fuel is open, which it is. Now we'll get the engine started. First, I have an hour meter I want to install on here. I haven't done that yet, but I will do that 
probably in an upcoming video and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to get the blade tensioned up and we'll start milling.
So here's what we got. The last board was a little bit under an inch thick. One of the things I really like about white birch is the, the two-tone color. Brownish color in the middle and the whitish color in the sapwood. Makes it look beautiful hardwood lumber. So we got those two and we got these four over here. So they really came out beautiful. I love this two-tone wood. It was nine inches in diameter on one end, 10 on the other, so it wasn't a huge log. Uh, I think overall it's 10 or 11 feet long. Um, so it's still a pretty good amount of lumber in it. We got six boards that are 10 or 11 feet long, one inch thick. And let me see, I never looked at the, the width of it. Six inches. So we got six one by six white birch boards out of that one little log. So not bad. Got some marks on my head from the, the helmet. And if you're wondering why I was wearing a helmet is I use it for the face shield and the hearing protection. Obviously not so much really the helmet unless it's a windy day. Maybe some of these trees might come down and hit me in the head. So pretty much once I'm done with the sawmill, number one thing, take the tension off the blade. Two, turn the fuel off. Three, turn the valve on the lube tank off. And then if it's gonna rain, before I'm gonna use it next, I'll put the cover on it, but I'll be using it again tomorrow and it's not gonna rain for a few days, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, comments, any feedback, throw them down in there in the comments section below. Uh, hit the like button. If you don't mind the thumbs up, it helps us out a lot. If you're new, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you get notified of new videos coming out. I got some new attachments that I ordered from Woodmiser for this sawmill. So I'll be doing some videos on showing you on that. I will be doing a video to let you know my likes and dislikes of this sawmill so far compared to my Woodland Mills HM130, which I did sell and is gone. But I can certainly give you my feedback because I had it long enough. Uh, I can pretty much remember everything about it. So stay cool, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you on the next video.